The focus of today's war strategy will be grace, a license for sin. And the scripture will be Genesis chapter 4, verses 23 through 24. And it says, And Lamech said unto his wise Ada and Zillah, Hear my voice, ye wise of Lamech. Hearken unto my speech, for I have slain a man to my wounding, and a young man to my hurt. If Cain be avenged sevenfold, truly Lamech seventy and sevenfold. And then let's go to Genesis chapter 6 real quick in verse 11. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. And then in Hebrews chapter 10, beginning in verse 26. For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sin, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation, which shall devour the adversary. He that despises Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Of how much sore punishment suppose ye shall be, shall he be thought worthy who hath trodden underfoot the Son of God, and hath counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing, and hath done despite unto the Spirit of grace? For we know him that hath said, Vengeance belongeth unto me, I will recompense, saith the Lord. And again the Lord saith, uh, The Lord shall judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. And now to our strategy that I have written down. It says, There are consequences for the wrong decisions we make in life. Though the Lord is willing to forgive us in spirit, which means saving our spirit man, the consequences of our natural life can still be carried out. When Cain slew his brother, Abel, it created a breach in his line which would pave the way for more violence to come, as we saw in the life of Lamech. Though the Lord put a seal of protection upon Cain at that time, Lamech, his son, thought he could commit the same act of murder and invoke the same promise upon his life. But it doesn't work that way. Lamech used this act of mercy, this act of grace, which was upon Cain as a license to sin. But if everyone thought they can do the exact same thing, then it was only a matter of time before their world would be filled with violence. Because people like Lamech misused, abused, twisted, and manipulated the grace of God in this way, it ultimately led to their destruction. This is the same for us today, brothers and sisters. Many of us are living in sin and invoke the grace of God to justify our actions. Little do we truly know that when we act this way, the only thing that we're doing is building up judgment against ourselves, against our souls. The grace of God preserves the truly repentant soul from hell. Which means that the grace of God will preserve your spirit in hell if you truly belong to him. But it does not. But not the flesh. It does not preserve the flesh from judgment. If we walk in the ways of the world and thinking the grace of God can cover it. And so our spirit can be saved if you're truly in God. But if you're walking out this world in the flesh, there will be judgment. The grace of God will chasten his disobedient children in this world with fires of affliction if that's what it takes to keep you from hellfire itself. Because remember, the Lord's ultimate objective in our life here on earth is to keep us out of hellfire and reunite us back with him in heaven. He even died for us on the cross to keep this from happening, to keep us from going to hell so this way we can be with him in heaven. This is how serious he takes. This is how far he went to preserve us from going to hell. But if we choose to walk after the ways 
of hell upon his earth upon his earth and trust the grace of God to cover our actions as Lamech thought that he can do we are only deceiving ourselves instead of grace we will reap the destruction we deserve and so brothers and sisters this is something that we must take to heart when we consider the grace of God because the grace of God is what meant to keep us in his perfection. His perfection, not ours. His perfection, what I mean by that is that by the blood of Jesus Christ, even though we fall short because we're in a sinful nature, what it does is that it covers our imperfection. Whatever percentage we may be missing out on from, you know, from perfection of that day, the Lord fills it up to keep us walking in his perfect image. So what I mean by that, what I mean is, that today, if you was only able to perfect your walk with God by 5%, His grace covers the 95% that you're missing. If you was only able to walk in the perfection of God by 50% on a particular day, His grace covers the other 50%. That's what the grace is there for. It covers, it, it covers our imperfection. It fills in what we're missing, what we're lacking. So this way, every single day of our lives, you can walk in the perfection of Christ. So this has nothing to do with us because there's nothing we can ever do to walk 100% in his perfection. But that grace, that grace is the reason why we're perfect before him. Because it covers up our imperfections. And now, with many doctrines that has gone out today, doctrines of demons... They're teaching that this grace will cover your sins regardless of what you do. But yet we just read here in Hebrews chapter 10, how if we willfully continue to sin despite the fact that we heard the truth and, re and we should have received the truth, then there is no more sacrifice because now you're trying to play God for a fool. And God is not one to be mocked. He said in his word that I will not be mocked. And so when we think we can play with the world, and do the things in the world and think grace would just cover us and we could try to play this game? God says, no, I will not be mocked. You think you want to do this? Whatever you soweth is what you will reap. But truly, if your heart is repentant of God, and yes, sometimes we can kind of lose our way and walk down the broad road of destruction because we got tempted by something along the way. If our heart is truly with God, understand that God would not let you go that easy. Instead, what he would do is that he would use the path that you're on to bring about afflictions in your flesh while you're still on this earth. So this way, at the end of it, you will learn to repent and come back to him. So once you are in God, it is impossible for you to get out of his hand. But the thing is, is that you have to be in God to begin with. So therefore, it is impossible for someone who is truly in God to go to hell, because if you're truly in God, believe you mean that God will work situations in your life if you have gone astray to bring you right back. However, if you were never in God to begin with, even though you thought that you were in God, then you will walk a path of destruction, and there, there is no grace for you along that path of destruction, and you will find yourself in hell when you're before the judgment seat of God, and he, told, and he tells you to be gone away from me, and you even do it for I knew you not. So you see, this permanent position of never being separated from God, it all depends on if you're truly rooted in the heart of God. So we should never ever take that chance to think that we are and then go after the ways of the world to find out at the end that we were sorely mistaken and therefore our soul is cast to hell. Instead, we walk life to the best way we can, abiding by the two commandments of love. And then when we do fall short, we repent, we receive the grace of God and get back up and keep walking in that 100% perfection that he has ordained through his blood and the mercy that comes with it. And so, brothers and sisters, this is the importance of the message that is being released to you about the grace of God being used as a license. Lamech thought he can do it, but yet he was destroyed with the flood, if he lived that long, that is. And so many people today think they can do it, but no, it's going to lead to their own destruction. And the Lord is going to use the word and put it right back in their face saying that, hey, look, you knew the truth. You thought you can go ahead and play me for a fool. I told you I would not be mocked. And so now you shall reap what you deserve. And so I pray that you will all take this to heart and really consider how you're living your lifestyle. 
Don't be deceived by these wolves in sheep clothing that surround to tell you different when it comes to the grace of God. If your heart is truly rooted in God, you would not want to taste after the sins of the world because God will change your heart little by little, but he would change your heart to not have any more satisfaction by the sins of the world where it will give you such a guilt, a, a, a godly sorrow, a guilty conscience to even think to indulge in a sinful thing. You will feel that disgust, that vomiting feeling when you go after the things of the world because you got tempted by the enemy. But surely if this is not in you and you enjoy it and you're, having, you're, you're filled with it, and you're thinking, oh, I'm good because my pastor told me that grace got me covered. I'm going to heaven. You're going to be sorely mistaken and deceived. And so, brothers and sisters, be not deceived when it comes to the grace of God. The grace that God offers is for those who's truly in him. And even if you're not in him right now, his grace is still offered to you because every day that you wake up and you have not died yet is another day of God's grace on your life to get it right before it is too late. So, brothers and sisters, do the right thing. Repent of your sin and continue to humble yourself before the Lord. Because friendship with the world will make you at enmity. It will make you an enemy of God. Let us pray. Father, forgive us for all the times in which we took advantage of your grace in which we use your grace to go in pursuit of the pleasures of the flesh, which has only brought more trouble in our lives. Thank you, Father, for t letting us know and teaching us, Father, what your grace really means for us. That is not a license for us to go about and sin. For, Father, yes, we're going to sin and we're going to fall short because we're in a sinful nature. But our heart determines where we are in you and our heart determines how that grace is flowed onto us. Because many of us, Father, have declared you to be our Lord and Savior and received you into our hearts, for we spoke it. But yet, Father, many of us have given you lip service, but truly in our hearts you never resided. In our thoughts, we thought that it made logical sense. And so, therefore, we thought we received you into our hearts, but yet you reside in our conscience. But never have we allowed you into our homes. And so, therefore, Father, we're still strangers with you. And being deceived by going into the world, thinking that we can go after the pleasures of our flesh, not knowing that with every action is more judgment that's being poured upon us and is more satisfaction that the enemy is getting because he knows where this broad road is going to lead us to. And so, Father, we pray that you will give us a, a godly sorrow, not a worldly sorrow, Father, that makes us remorseful because we got caught in our actions, but a godly sorrow that makes us know that even in the darkness from the eyes of men in which we commit sins, that we still feel that guilt to know that we still did wrong against you. And we seek to get our records clear before you by humbling ourselves before you, repenting and receiving of your blood again to keep us covered. And thank you, Father, for the grace that you're showing for the unbelievers in the world, O oh God, that's still going after the way of the enemy, that blasphemes your name constantly, and you continue to be long-suffering with them by allowing them the breath of life in their bodies so that they can still someday, hopefully one day, repent. We pray, Father, that you would touch many of the lost souls around the world right now, O oh God, and many in the kingdom, O oh God, who is abusing your grace right now, and that you would bring about situations in their life to give them a rude awakening of what awaits them if they repent not. For, Father, many are going to be left behind on a day in which you come to get your church if we continue to walk in this way of abusing your grace. And we will only have ourselves to blame, Father, as we go through the fiery afflictions of the great tribulation so that our hearts may be, tru be truly purified so that we can be in oneness with you, Father, and make it end, Father, and not perish in the a, in a hells of fire. And so, Father, we thank you for hearing our prayers. Thank you for continuing to not give up on us and allowing your grace to be abundant upon all. And may we never again, Father, abuse your grace in this way. For your word speaks truth, and your word stands forever. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. I am guilty, ashamed of what I've done, what I've become. These hands are dirty, I dare not lift them up to the whole.
Now